hello youtube welcome back to the channel so and this we're going to go over uh, what hyperparameter tuning in for machine learning so if you're anyone who wants to uh, see how you can improve the uh, performance of your machine learning models by tweaking different parameters and changing the architecture of the model so it can get a better accuracy then this tool is for you so if you just want to improve the accuracy of your model to get better performance from your models by tweaking different values and adjusting the different parameters then this tool is for you so uh, we're going to learn what is is basically called hyperparameter tuning and we're going to go ahead and cover hyperparameter tuning in this tutorial okay so if you're new to the channel please kindly consider subscribing liking this video and sharing this content with anyone uh, you think might find it helpful so let's get to it so uh the first thing uh, we want to discuss is what is a hyperparameter tuning okay so what is hyperparameter tuning just in a simple nutshell so let me just cover it so uh, let me just take it from a point of building a machine learning model so when building a machine learning model we often times right we do not uh, know the best uh, architecture to use for the machine learning model so or the best architecture to choose to use our model the, be the best parameters to use to get a, a, a better performing model right we don't know which uh, parameters to use to get a better performing model as a result of, of this uh, of, of being a vast number of parameters to use right because you have a lot of parameters to use for example if you are doing uh, uh you can di tweak different things like the learning rates the different weight the biases there are a lot of things you can adjust and tweak the number of layers that you have where maybe for example a deep learning network number of layers that you have the number of uh neurons in each layer all those we don't actually know what's the perfect uh, what's the perfect value right so uh per hyperparameter uh, just help us to be able to choose the the best performing uh value by, by uh the best performing parameters to use right how many layers you should have how many neurons should be in each layer for example maybe we are going to think of, think of it from uh, a deep planning perspective or a deep planning point of view but if you're also just doing a uh, normal traditional uh, machine learning you can there are different parameters that you can adjust right like the, the running rate and so on so a uh, hyperparameter tuning uh, can help us to do this and how do we do this we can do this man uh, manually by different training of different parameters but that can take a long 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 time to do so another approach we, uh, we can do this to choose the best performing parameters is called the hyperparameter tuning so our uh, parameters we use to define a model are called hyperparameters hence the process of automatically letting the computer right you can let the computer automatically select the best parameters for us uh, through a process of trial and error this is called hyperparameter tuning so hyperparameters are used to define a model are called hyperparameters and the process of selecting the best hyperparameters are called is called hyperparameter tuning and this is done through a process of trial and error okay you can do this manually by uh selecting different values but i'll show you how to let the computer do this first so i don't have to go through all that hassle and that's what this tutorial is all about so why hyperparameter tuning so uh, uh how many it can help us decide how many uh, layers to how many uh how many uh, trees to use in our random forest how many layers we should use in our neural network how many neurons should be used in each layer of the neural network uh, what should be used uh, what sh what should uh, you you set the learning rate of a uh, gradient descent to be from a uh, uh, deep learning point of view what should be the the k in your k nearest neighbors right uh, what should be the maximum date of addition tree and so on and so forth so there are many many ways uh, where you can uh, use hyperparameters to get the best performing model when you are training a machine learning or a deep learning model okay so there are many many different approaches we can use so uh, let's look at uh, hyperparameter tuning and model parameters okay so what's the difference between a hyperparameter and a model parameter these are two different concepts but most of the time we of often confuse them so a model parameter uh, uh mod why uh, model parameters are learned during the training of the model and the model parameters specify how to transform the input to a given desired output right so for example if you look at from a point of deep learning right we have a neuron right each that neuron has a weight and biases so those weights and biases are learned during training and those are uh, define how the how the our input is going to be transformed to get the desired output so those are called model parameters and if you look at uh, what a hyperparameter is a hyperparameter just define the structural uh, the architecture basically uh, define how a model is actually structured so how many layers are there how many neurons are in each layer that is called hyper those are hyperparameters but the press of the press of the actual values we instead of the instead of the model itself like the weights and different biases uh, those are called the model parameters okay so that's the difference between a model parameter and a hyperparameter while the hyperparameter just define the actual structure of a of a network model parameters the actual the values within the model that the model learns during training right so that's, that's the difference between a hyperparameter and uh, a model parameter okay 
okay so, so how do we go about selecting a hyperparameter so when it comes to hyperparameters the only way to select a hyperparameter is through trial and error as i mentioned earlier on so we select the hyperparameter based on the on the values that give us the best performing model and we can do this by trying uh, trial and error for example let's take, think of it like you're trying to build a neural network right you can first decide to go with uh, five layers and then later you can reduce it to four layers to see how the model performs right so that's basically what hyperparameter tuning is all about okay so selecting a hyperparameter, uh, there, there are different ways you can do to achieve this uh, selecting of hyperparameters, uh, because there are a lot of uh, uh, a lot of values that you can select from. Like for, them, should, for example, if you're trying to create a neural network, right, you can decide to use one layer, you can decide to use two layers, you can decide to use ten layers. D just the options of us. You don't know what's the best parameters to use. So there are a couple of ways of uh, that you can use to perform hyperparameter uh, tuning. Okay, so this can be done automatically by the computer. Means you don't have to manually do this yourself. You just have to specify all the possible values that you want. So for example, if you're trying to build a neural network and you want uh, one neural network to try one uh, model in which you have five uh, uh, mod layers, you want to try another model which you have ten layers. You want to try another model which you have twenty layers. So you can specify all that value, and the machine will uh, build those models and test it out and then return the performance to you so you can know which model gives you the best or which combination of parameters of hyperparameters gives you the best or performing model so that's what hyperparameter is all about so whenever to, uh, whenever you are trying to tune a hyperparameter there is this approach that i typically use so the first one is find a model set the range of possible values for all our parameters for example talking about the neural network right you can decide all number of layers that you want okay and then define a method for sampling the hyperparameter values define evaluate criteria to judge the model's performance on and then define a cross validation method okay that's basically what you're going to be using and you're going to apply it in uh, uh in this tutorial so now let's look at what uh, data splitting is when we are trying to train a model right um you don't want to test the model on the data that you have used to train the model it's like basically if you go to school right your your math teacher teaches you some uh, uh maybe linear algebra equations right and it gives you some couple of assignments to do right so during the exam the teacher doesn't repeat the same assignments that were given in class typically right so uh, what the teacher gives it gives you a different question but has the same uh, concepts that you can apply to see if you actually understood what you have studied in class, right? So, uh, the, the teacher can give you the exact assignments uh, that he gave in class in the exam, right? That that wouldn't test your knowledge. That wouldn't uh, wouldn't make sure that you actually are being tested on uh, whether you have understood the concept or not, because you can just remember what you did in class and just copy paste it in the exam, right? So, uh, that's the same thing when it comes to uh, machine learning. So, you want to you want to train the machine learning on a da one data set and you want to test it on a different data set to see how well the machine learning model generalizes. Okay. So uh, how well it can generalize on unseen data, that's basically it. So the price of, of uh, to avoid this, right, we split the data into training and testing, t uh, training, uh, validation and testing sets. This uh, withhold, uh, this withholding of data prevents something that we call data leakage, in which we train the model and evaluate it or test it on the same data set. So training and evaluating the model on the same data set is a, a term, a, a, it has a term that we call it in data science called data leakage, right? Basically, you are training the model on one data and you're testing it on the same data. It has already seen that data before, so it will do significantly better. But if it gets data that it hasn't seen before, it do uh, it might that it might do a, a significantly poor, right? So how can you actually test the data machine learning model on data that it has never seen and uh, avoid the problem of training it on data that it are uh, trying to test it on data that it has it has already seen? Uh, something called data leakage. Okay. And that's why we have to split our data into three main tests, right? So three main, uh, three main portions. We have training, uh, training tests. We have the validation test, and you have the testing sets. So this all combined together can help us to avoid data leakage. Okay. Another typical way of doing this is through, uh, is through. Uh, let me just explain to you using this diagram right here. So you can see this diagram is right. This is our data set, right? So uh, by using a uh, different method, we can split this into different. So we can use uh, this amount for testing, right? The orange ones for testing. I think this is orange or pink, whatever color it is. Uh, <laughs> let me know in the comment section below. I don't know which color is that. I think it's pink. I don't know. Okay, so uh, we can use the. Okay, let me just call it pink. Okay, <laughs> for the sake of it, let me call it pink. If you think it's not pink, uh, let me know in the comment section below what color it is. Okay, so we have this data set right here. So we can use the pink ones right for testing our data, while you can use the the, the blue one for training our data. So we use like you can use eighty percent for training, and you can use twenty percent for testing, and that's what that's the whole point of uh, training, uh, validation, and test play. So we can use. Uh, uh, the maybe you can use 20% for, for testing and you can use the, re the remaining 
uh, 80% for training the data to avoid any problem of data leakage. And uh, another way you can do this actually dealing with um, data leakage is by using what you call k full validation and we'll look at it when you get into the query session. There are other advanced techniques that you can employ uh, to get the same achieve. Uh, we can use the k-fold uh, that is able to train the model and perform evaluation without introducing any data leakage. So using the k-fold validation, we can uh, be able to uh, train and evaluate our data while avoiding any problem of data leakage. Okay. So I have, as I said earlier later on, we're going to be going ahead and looking at the different way, different uh, methods of the uh, uh, selecting the hyperparameter, right? So we can do this through uh, a grid search method. We can use this through a random search, and we can use uh, also a Bayesian optimization. But in this tutorial, we're going to go over two main things. We're going to look at grid search and random search, okay? So let me just go over to grid search. So uh, grid search, I have it right here. So uh, what's grid search basically? So uh, you might be confused uh, what's grid search and what's all, what's it all used about. So grid search basically it evaluates the data in form of a grid method by trying all possible method. It also has random search and random search uh, basically combines uh, picks random values and then hyper picks random hyperparameters, combines them and then tests test them out randomly without following any systematic method. While a grid search method follows a systematic method, trying out one uh, one hyperparameter with all the other pot other possible hyperparameters. And grid search can take a lot of time because it has to go and try one uh, one uh, hyperparameter with all the other possible hyperparameters we have in our uh, on the, in the list of hyperparameters that we specified. And if you're confused about this, don't be. We'll look at this just in a second. So that sometimes you have to know that grid search takes a longer time than random search because grid search tries one hyperparameter with every other hyperparameter, while random search just picks random values and combines them and then see which model uh, which gives you the best combination. Okay. Okay, so once I look at that, I went ahead and simply started my Jupyter notebook and it's opened up right here. Okay, so what I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to create a file here and I'm just going to call, uh, I can give it any name, uh, let just call it hyperparameters. So this is hyper, uh, per hyper parameters parameter uh, tuning and just call parameter tuning and then press enter so the first you're going to be looking at is called a uh, grid search so I'm just saying uh, let me just call it hyper parameter uh, tuning and then down here I'm going to make this a markdown cell and to make this a markdown just click on the side of the cell and to change to blue and press M on your keyboard or you can also go in here and change it right here okay but now you're going to leave it as markdown so I'm going to write um, this is going to be a grid uh, search okay so grid search so to perform grid search, the first thing you need to do is actually uh, load in the data that you want to load. So we're going to be using SKLearn for this. So make sure that you have SKLearn or installed on your machine. Okay. So uh, SKLearn, you're also going to be using Pandas. Okay. So make sure that you have those two libraries installed. So Scikit-Learn and Pandas. Okay. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to waste enough. Um, and, uh, I'm going to. I'm not going to waste any time. Okay. And uh, if you're using Google Colab, you can also try this out on Google Colab. It also works because you're not going to be using any default data set. You're going to be. The you're going to be using the data set that uh, Scikit-Learn provides for us. Okay. So I'm going to go and say uh, from sklearn uh, dot data sets. I'm going to go ahead and import load. Uh, sorry, it's load underscore iris so i will be using the iris uh, flower data set i'm also going to say from sk learn dot uh, model underscore selection uh, let me get that spin so selection i'm going to go ahead and import uh, grid grid uh, i'm going to import grid size cv i'm going to import train test splits i'm also going to import uh, stratified uh, stratified uh, stratified fold that's what i want and I'm also going to import the model that I need. So I'm going to say from uh, from SK learn dot uh, ensemble. We're going to be an assemble model. Basically, uh, we're going to be using a random forest. So we're going to import a random forest classifier. I'm also going to import uh, pandas as PD. Okay. So once I have those done, I'm going to go and say iris underscore uh, data uh, data set. Iris data set is going to be equals to load underscore iris. And then I'm going to say uh, iris underscore data set and then just run that to see what we have so uh load data set is not defined uh, let me just run this okay this is load load iris okay and then run that so it says um uh iris data set but i called it here iris data set let me just copy that and simply paste it here and then run again so i probably made a typo right okay this is iris and not iris okay so iris 
okay so now if i run it you can see you get probably you get this in your command uh, in your terminal so you can scroll down and get the information about the data set so the iris data set is a very 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 famous data set in machine learning uh, and data science for uh, if you ever watch my tutorials on other uh data science like machine learning tools like uh what's this is building a simple classifier we use went ahead and use all these iris data sets so i'm not going to explain much about the iris data set but you can go and read about it it has different columns like the the sample length the sample width the petal length the petal width and then like which class of iris flower it is okay so this is this is a set about flowers called the iris uh, flower okay so once we have looked at that what i want to go ahead and do is actually now convert this into a data frame so i'm going to say df is going to be equals to uh pd dot uh data uh frame you can work with it converting to data frame but uh i want to convert to a data frame so it can look much more uh better so i'm going to say iris data set and i'm going to say dot data right you're getting the data and i'm saying column is going to be uh, iris underscore data uh, set dot uh, feature uh feature uh feature underscore names right there and once i have that i can simply do df dot head to check the first five rows so do run that and you can see this our data that we have right here okay good so once we have this what i want to go ahead and do is now begin to we split our data and then begin to actually add uh for, before we do that actually i want to add another column to this because you can see this is a separate word. these are the just the x values right now i want the y value which is going to be the target so i'm going to say df create another column i'm going to call this column uh target and this column is simply going to be uh iris underscore data set dot target so we have a, we have uh, if you go and read here we have something called target and that's what you're trying to uh, get access to okay so i'm just going to run this again and then do the df dot head now you should be able to see the target column right here okay good so you can read more about this if you want this data set if you want uh, but i'm not going to go into depth about this data set so if it is zero right if the target is zero then it is iris setosa if it is one then it's iris vesicola and if it is two it is iris virgin uh, virginica okay those are the three iris flowers that we have okay so once we have this data set uh done our uh, into a data frame what i want to do i want to go ahead and split the data so i'm going to make a cell here and i'm going to say x uh, y uh, split i'm just going to call it xy split you can call it anything you want uh feel free okay so once i have this i'm going to simply go ahead and do and we we'll say uh, x and x is going to be a df dot drop and i'm going to go ahead and drop the target column so target and you're going to say it's on axis it's going to be a column so you're going to say axis one and uh yeah and then you can also do y is going to be equals to df dot uh target or you can also do df and then you get it by using the the kind of like the square notation yeah and then run that so once i have this i can do x dot uh, head and let's see what we have so we have everything except the target and now we can do y and if you run y this is y right we have right there okay good so once we have that uh you can also do y dot head if you want y dot head and then uh run that you can also get the same information the first five rows okay so once we have that what i want to go ahead and do now is uh, split the data into training and testing sets so i'm just going to go here and make this a markdown uh, by pressing m uh, okay so by uh, pressing the side of the cell and pressing m so this is going to be uh te train right uh train test uh split just like that mm, let's just call it train test train and test split uh train test split just like that so in here i'm going to say x underscore train comma x underscore test comma y underscore train comma y underscore test this is going to be equals to uh train uh, underscore test split that we imported right we're going to pass in x the y and we're going to say the test underscore size is going to be you're going to be using 20 percent for for testing while the rest 80 percent you're going to be using it for for training so i'm going to say the random random state i'm just going to be, leave it to be 90. you can leave it to be any number you want okay so this random state will help us to uh rep to uh make reproducibility so if you want also to split the, the, to have the same splits as i did here then you have to say your random state to be 90. but feel free to use any random value that you want okay so i'm going to try uh, i'm going to x uh, train dot shape and i have 120 uh 120 rows for for training you can also do x underscore test uh, underscore test dot uh shape so this will return to us the number of uh ro roles that you're going to be using for training for testing you're going to be using 30 for testing while 120 for uh roles for training so once we have that let's go ahead and define our model so just make this a markdown and we say uh, define uh, model 
just like that so the defined model we're going to create a random forest classifier and i'm going to call it rfc this is going to be called random uh forest classifier and just create an instance of it so random forest can specify the number of trees you want but i'm just going to be leaving uh, leaving it to be like that by default value okay so once i have that i'm going to go ahead and set the range of possible parameters that i can i can specify here so if you go uh, open up in here uh, this uh, sk learn random uh, forest okay this is such that so if you go uh, in here on the official documentation of sk learn random forest you can see we have all these parameters that you can tune we have a number of estimators which are basically a number of decent trees that you're going to have in our random forest the criterion the maximum depth uh, the minimum sample all this information so we can tweak all these hyperparameters these are all the hyperparameters you can tweak and work with so i'm not going to go over each of these right it's very ridiculous to go over all of them but in your own time you can go ahead and test all of them if you want and that's act act actually something really good okay so the first thing i'm going to go ahead and do is actually specify the number the, uh, the criterion that i want to use so we can just copy this from here uh, the criterion that you want to use so i can just simply copy this uh, copy it and then simply go and set the hyperparameter. So I'm going to make this a markdown again, and I'm just going to be uh, set uh, the range. Let me just say set the range of hyper hyper parameters. Okay, okay. So set the for range of hyper parameters. So I'm going to go and say parameters parameters and this is going to be equals to a dictionary so a dictionary and you're going to go ahead and pass in the value so the first one is going to be criterion so uh sorry uh just put it there and then this is going to be a key so we have the values right here so this, i don't know this is actually not uh semi uh, sorry a quotes so let me just go ahead and put in the right quotes and then okay the right quotes here and also here i'm going to prefer the right quotes uh, the right code okay so that's uh, one hyperparameter to use so we are going to go ahead and test uh, and test uh, uh, this is actually supposed to be a list and not a dictionary so let me just quickly change that to be a list okay so let's also change the, uh, this one right here and it's going to be a list so there's it so we have it here so uh, these are all the uh, hyper for uh, criterion can be uh, b can be Gini impurity can you can use Gini uh, Gini impurity can use entropy can use uh, a log loss and all that so by default i think is log loss so i'm not going to use log loss here but you can leave it if you want but you can oh gee by default it's a genie impurity so uh, actually let's actually uh, go ahead and leave the log loss here uh, it's not any bad so once we have this it's going to go uh let's go and specify another parameter so we can also use the number of trees number of estimators right so i'm just going to go, go uh here and specify the number of estimators that we uh we want to try out so uh let's go in here and you can say uh, number of underscore estimators. So number of estimators is going to be, uh, we can say the number of estimators that you want to use. We can use 10, we can use 100, let's say what, these are 100 trees, we can use 150. These are, some, these are just some random values that I'm specifying. And then later we can see what's the best value to use, okay? And because it's the number of sample, and you can also check all this on the few documentation. So uh, number of sample. Uh, number of samples underscore leaf number of sample leaves and number of sample leaf is going to be the following so we're going to uh, specify the following so it's going to be a list you can use one you can use two you can use uh, uh four we can use six okay and then i'm going to go ahead and specify the max underscore feature max uh, features and the max feature you're going to uh, leave uh, leave it to be the following so the max feature we're going to say auto uh Mm, let's say sqrt square root and you can also specify log 2 so all this is all of your documentation you can go ahead and read about the different parameters see which parameters you want to tweak and then specify their possible values right here and then run a hyperparameter tuning test uh, to select for the best parameters to use so once we have these values specified i'm going to go ahead and specify the k uh the k fold and the k fold is just going to be uh the following so i'm going to say stratified k fold right i'm going to say number of uh splits number of split is going to be equals to uh let's leave number of splits to be uh five okay so once we have this done uh that's all basically what you need so this is going to be the number of k folds is going to be used for something called cross uh validation okay so let me just bring you back here and uh, go back to this uh, image right here so we're going to split our data into five uh, think of it as uh, being our data right? we're going to split it into our uh, five different portions right that's what specify as a k fold so if i go back here it's five k fold as five right so we're going to split our data into five different portions. so on the on the first run uh it's going to use one one portion for testing while the remaining four for training another run is going to choose the second portion it's going to use that one for 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 testing while it's going to remain use the remaining four for 
uh, for, for training. And it's going to do like that uh, until we have reached the end. That's what uh, the k fold stands for. Okay. Okay. So uh, number of splits, uh, not splits. So number of splits and not split. Okay. So I'm going to use the classifier. Yet. I'm going to go ahead and just say, uh, just delete this all. Uh, delete it and then run it. So I'm going to say uh, classifier. And it's going to be equals to, we're going to say a grid search. We're going to be using grid search here. I'm going to say the classifier, which is random forest classifier. And then our parameters, which we, uh, is this variable of parameters, we specified up here. And then you're going to go ahead and say the so once I have the vibe, uh, the parameter specified, I'm going to go ahead and specify the scoring parameter, which method you're going to be using for scoring. And you're going to be using the accuracy for scoring. And then for the number of jobs, uh, number of jobs, right, underscore jobs, uh, is going to be equals to two. So we're going to create two different jobs on our CPU, okay? On our on, on our computer, basically, on our processor. So we're going to use the, the K fold to use here, or the cross validation to use is going to be K uh, fold, okay? So once we have that done, I can simply go ahead and run that. And once we have that, I can say classifier dot f uh, classifier dot fit. I guess I will fit a model, right? So we're going to fit the classifier. You're going to say uh, the train x train and y underscore train, and then it should give us the number of uh, possible files that we have. Okay. So in here, you don't you don't you don't, you don't have to have to split it passing uh, x train and y train. You can just go ahead and specify x and why yeah basically and then simply run this so this is going to go ahead and uh this uh, i think these are some warnings that we have right here uh okay let me just see what all this warning about uh just scroll down here so it says that mm, yeah you can just ignore these warnings for now this is uh, some warnings that we have um is it some things have been depreciated uh okay that's basically why you're getting all these warnings right here uh, we can escape all these warnings if you want but for now let's just leave these warnings uh in here and uh, we can write the code to specify all this uh, to ignore all these warnings so you can just go ahead and import import warnings and uh, i think you can specify warnings dot uh ignore and then you can specify which warnings that you want to ignore and that to ignore all the warnings okay uh, but for now let's let's wait for this to finish uh training and at the end it's going to give us the, the best parameters to uh we can use for our model So yeah, you can see it's a uh, completed, completed running, and you can see we have the output here. So grid uh, is going to say grid search, and we have all these values right here. So you can uh, expand all of this and read more about this. But basically, this is what we have: random forest classifier, uh, estimator, random forest classifier, and then uh, uh, this right here. So what I assume we want to go ahead and, and do is now we can go ahead and different get the different uh, best parameters to use right because it trained the random forest classifier using grid search CV. Now we can go ahead and get the different the different parameters to use. So I can simply go ahead and say classifier dot uh, get underscore. Uh, params right and then simply run the code so classifier to get params is if you run the code it's going to return to you all the parameters that you have you have, you have used so far all the possible com combinations that you have used okay so uh what now i want to go ahead and do is select the best parameters out of all these parameters you have specified so i can simply say classifier dot best underscore params uh params and then underscore so that's return to you the best parameters so don't forget the underscore so it's classifier dot best underscore Param params underscore okay so this is the best parameters our model found that uh, from all the parameters we specified up here right uh, all the parameters let me just minimize this for for all the from all the parameters that we specified up here right from all the but these possible parameter combinations right uh the model found that the best parameter to use is this uh, combination so we have gene impurity we have for for criteria we have gene genie uh for max features we have auto for main sample samples leaf we have one and the number of estimators is 200 okay so in case the number of estimators is around 200 so the more trees they are the better our model in this case okay so what does grid search mean and what how does it differ from something that you're going to look at later on called uh uh, uh random for a uh, random uh, random search so using grid search right now so what grid search does is be for example it starts from criteria criterion right you take the first criterion we have here it's called genie right it's going to try genie with this one this one this one this value right and then it's also going to try it with all these other ones so it's going to try this with all possible combinations of all the remaining ones here and it's going to go uh, in here and try this with all the possible combinations here and it's going to go ahead and try this with all the post other possible combinations from all these other hyperparameters you specified so it does all of that so that's why it can take a lot of time to train uh, uh we're using grid search for hyperparameter uh, search or hyperparameter tuning but uh, in this case i'm using a gpu and um 
I have a lot of like computing, uh, uh, not a lot, but uh, quite average, so it's a bit fast, okay? So, guess okay, so what? Get the base score, uh, base score, and then say base score, and then uh, underscore, and then run it. So, the base score is until 99 point, okay, approximately 97, right? So, uh, the base score they gave us is 97 using the random forest classifier. So, great, that's simple how you can perform a random search, uh, like, sorry, hyperparameter tuning search or hyperparameter search using. Uh, the grid search okay so now let's look at uh, and see how we can make predictions to our model and see what we can get so let's go ahead and just say make this m and i'm going to say uh make pre predictions with the best uh best found params okay so let's go ahead and see how we can make prediction the best found problems so let's say classifier dot predict and i'm going to say pass in here i'm going to pass in a list i'm going to say x uh x dot uh, i lock uh i lock and then to get the zero value so zero and then uh you can say uh dot uh values right dot values and just uh run that code and you can get a prediction of zero which is right here okay great this is just a morning so just ignore this warnings for now okay so we have all that uh we, or we can make now predictions let's change this again make this to be 10 and let's get with then we predict zero let's make this to be 11 and check the prediction so zero okay i'm not getting all zero so then i also got a zero prediction okay uh okay i was getting zero so, but you can try this and you can get other predictions because our model is quite accurate it has an accuracy of about 97 percent accuracy okay that's all about grid search and how you can use grid search to select the best parameters to use so in this case you can go ahead and build a model uh us using this uh specifying the criterion as gini specifying the max features as auto uh main samples leave as a one and then number of estimators as 200 so you can choose you can see that it chose the best the most number of leads so you can actually increase in your building another model you can increase around 210 220 play with that value and see how uh, your model is right so that's basically how we can perform grid search using uh perform by hyperparameter to uh, hyperparameter search using grid search okay good so now let's move on to uh let's see what we have next so the next thing that we have is random search so let's see how we can uh, uh use random search for hyperparameter tuning so i'm going to go in here i'm going to select uh click on this and then make this to be uh, a markdown and we're going to say a random uh search uh, using uh sk learn okay from python just run that so here we need to go ahead and import a couple of things so what we need to go ahead and do uh yeah we don't actually need to import anything we have all the things that we need to import we have the data set we can do x uh, if i do uh, x dot uh the x dot uh we can do x dot uh head right x dot head and let's see what we get we get this information back we can do x dot uh dot shape which we turn to about 150 if i'm not mistaken it's dot shape and then run that yeah 150 rules okay okay so we have all that information done now we can go ahead and split the data that i i went ahead and show you how to split the data right here because once you create the model itself because it just help us uh this uh grid search help us select the best parameters to you so now you can use these parameters to build an actual random forest and then you can go ahead and split your data into trading and testing sets and then perform more uh testing on your data okay okay so once we have all this done uh now i want to go ahead and uh, uh create a simple model uh, it's going to be a random forest model and uh in you're going to learn ahead and see how we can use a random uh a random search so to import it we actually need we naturally need to import one more thing so i'm going to create another cell below here so just click on this cell on the side and press b to create another cell right here so i'm going to import something which is going to be the random uh random uh randomized search cv so i'm going to say from sk learn uh, dot model uh, selection i'm going to go ahead and import a uh, randomized search cv okay so once i have it imported i'm going to go ahead and now uh, use uh, use the same value so i'm going to be using the same parameter that we have up here so you can even copy it if you want but it's already in memory so you don't need to copy it but i'm just going to copy it and simply go ahead and paste it here and then run that cell so we have the parameters that we have here so i'm going to create another k fold i'm going to create k fold and it's going to be uh, run, uh this k fold is going to be um it's going to be the stratified uh, fold and you're going to say number of uh, splits and number of splits you're going to leave it to be uh five okay just like we did before uh okay so once we have this done i'm going to create a classifier chain it's going to be called the random uh, randomized search randomized 
randomize search CV and you're going to pass in our random forest which is the random forest classifier that we uh, created above so uh, you can actually create it again if you want you can just create any random classifier and it's going to be random uh, forest okay classifier and then run that so once I have this okay don't uh, just don't worry about this uh, error we will just uh, fix it so they're going to specify the number of parameters so parameters parameters I'm going to pass in the parameters that is going to be used we're going to pass in the scoring I'm uh, going to use uh, accuracy accuracy okay and then uh, for the number of jobs so it's n underscore uh, jobs and number of jobs you're going to leave have to be two okay you can increase if you want if you have more computing power okay so it's a k fault okay so i can go ahead and simply run that so once i have this we can go ahead and classifier dot fit i'm going to pass in x comma y and to on that data and simply run it so this is going to take some time uh and uh, find for us the high best parameters to use so just ignore this warnings for now so we just wait for that to go uh, to train and once it's trained we can go ahead and get the best parameters and get the best scores and all of that information okay so let's just give it uh, some time okay it looks like it's done uh, i can just minimize this so minimize this for now it looks like it's done so once it's done uh, we can go ahead and actually get the, the best model uh parameter so you can go ahead and say classifier dot uh, get underscore params uh, and then run that it's going to return to us all the possible uh, parameter combinations and then from there all the pro all the possible parameters you can use and then from there we can go ahead and do classifier dot best uh, underscore params uh, params and then underscore okay so run that and this return to us the best parameters to use so for number of estimators again it chose 200 the number of uh, mean uh, samples again it chose one the maximum features it chose log two let's see what it was in the uh when using grid search it was uh genie but mm, let me see it was uh criterion it chose down here up it chose the uh, max features max features let's go and see max features that it chose for grid search when using grid search max features uh max which i chose auto but now it chose uh log two criterion is, is also chose gene impurity as uh, usual so you can see the things are basically just uh so by using a random search we can uh, get also the same value but random search uh, what random search does is that it randomly picks a value from here and tries with any random values from here pick a random value from uh this uh this uh happy parameter and try with any other random value pick another random value from here and try with it any random value so it's just randomly picking one value and trying to run another ram another run another set of random values from other uh, types of uh, hyperparameters so unlike uh, unlike uh, grid search which picks uh, one value from here and try with all other possible values from the remaining hyperparameters right so picks one value from here and tries with all the remaining values from here and then picks another uh, parameter and then tries with all the other remaining values from here it does that for each of the uh, of the hyperparameters so that's why it takes a long time when using a grid search but for random search it simply just picks random values and try it out to see which one gives us the best accuracy that's why you can see even when i run the code it went really really fast because uh it's just randomly picking values and trying out and not all possible combination so grid search all possible combination randomized search is just a random uh random values right so it trains faster that's a big advantage of using a random fast it's much 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 faster okay so i want also to get the best score that i uh, we got using the uh, the parameters we got so random score and then underscore and then run that so also we got 90 uh, about 97 percent uh score okay so you can also check to see the classification uh check how it performs using the x underscore uh test right test uh test and then y underscore test he said perform it had a, a, an accuracy of 100 percent this is because actually uh we are using uh, we use x uh we use the whole data set for training and testing using the the k fold but now using the same data set right for for checking the accuracy that's why it's having this bias uh, kind of 100 percent accuracy right yeah but uh that's something that we call data leakage so that's this uh, an example of data leakage because we use the same data for training as testing so that's uh, that's why that's uh, why it's getting this random value uh, 100 percent that does not i don't mean by it you can get 100 percent accuracy but uh you get my point right so yeah so that's basically how you can perform hyperparameter tuning in machine learning using grid search and random search okay so uh let's go back to the presentation and uh, yeah we went over everything that i i wanted us to go over yeah so that's how you can perform uh um, uh, random search and grid search basically outperform hyperparameter tuning in machine uh, learning 
okay so that's basically it for this video if you guys enjoyed this video so far give it a thumbs up like the video uh, leave a comment in the comment section below let me know how the video was and share this with anyone who you think might find it helpful again if you're not subscribed to the channel please please kindly consider subscribing and liking this video uh, if you want me to make any other videos on machine learning leave a comment in the comment section below i'll do my best to get back to you thanks for watching and i'll uh, see you in the next one keep safe